and we're back. I wanted to make sure to get this um, information from TimeSpy up for you guys. And so what we're looking at here uh, from TimeSpy are the results of running this benchmark. The graphics score is not going to be the greatest, okay, because really uh, we're running an RX 580, which isn't the greatest video card in the world. But like I told you guys, I am not a gamer. I pretty much um, do a lot of uh, productivity stuff. My kid, on the other hand, is a gamer. Um, and so I've got to build him a rig that works pretty good. He used to just be on an iGPU, so he's got to be happy for whatever he's got right now. Uh, that sounds kind of bad. I'm basically telling him to deal with it. So, graphic score 864, right? Main thing we want to pay attention to is that CPU score. Because we're running 10 cores, 20 threads. 8014 is the CPU score. In time spy, 997 is the composite score that we had. And when we look at what did time spy do during its run, max boost clock, we're hitting mass boost boost clocks here, 3761.5, uh, so 3.76 gigahertz, my friends, and um, lowest being 3.3 gigahertz. Although core five went down to 1367, like went to sleep or something anyways um, let's see what this looks like online what does it mean when you're online it says that our score is pretty low compared to uh, gaming PC in 2020 which sort of doesn't 100% make sense to me because I know it performs better than that so this thing's not built for gaming. This thing's built for productivity. I know I sound like I'm making excuses, but um, TimeSpy is a program that must run some instruction sets that are more modern. Maybe that's why the AMD rigs that I have upstairs uh, are much more favorable. But I thought I'd run a gaming benchmark anyways, just so you guys could see it. And so that's what it runs in the gaming benchmark. Um, thank you and watch the previous video and you can see how to overclock a locked Xeon processor.